Hello, my name is Mike Egg. In this video, we are going to put together what we've learned so far about Windows programming. And we're going to build a currency exchange calculator uh, in our series on Windows programming with C Sharp. What I want to do is I'd like to create just a real simple application, sort of combines what we've learned so far uh, and turns it into something not really super useful in the real world, but for here it's a nice little sample application. And so what I want to build is a program that will convert uh, some amount of money in American dollars to some amount of money in a foreign currency. Okay. Um, so we're going to add a couple things to our form here. Uh, first thing I know I'm going to need is I'm going to have to ask about money from the user. And so I'm going to need a text box, which I'll drop in there. Uh, I'm going to need several uh, formatting tools. So I'll have several labels here. And I will have a button. Oh, I went the wrong way. Uh, and I also want radio buttons for my different currencies. Now, in this program, I am going to do uh, the Brazilian real or real, or I, I don't actually have any idea how to pronounce it. It's R E A L. I think it's a real. Uh, the British pound and the Canadian dollar. So I'm going to do three radio buttons. Okay. So let me just go ahead and expand these out here. And we'll work on getting this a little bit, uh, a little bit organized. All right, so I'm going to click center horizontally on my button to center it there, uh, and let's get some formatting put in place. Uh, so first things first. Um, so I will have this here. My label for I'm actually just going to change the text to be a dollar sign. And I will put it in front here like that. So you kind of have the idea that money goes in there. Um, and then I'm going to make label three say, or label three say, uh, American dollars is equal to. And my label two, I'm actually going to rename to. LBL converted currency and my label one is going to be uh, the text so um, that'll be currency type all right um, oh <laughs> I've made the name that instead of the text that'll be LBL currency type just like that so there we go uh, label two uh, text for starters is going to be, um, uh, which is not label two anymore. It's called label converted currency. We're going to set that to zero and we were going to set the text of this to nothing. All right. So right now it says blank American dollars is equal to zero. Okay. And that's, that's fine with me for now. Um, that looks good. Okay. Uh, and now I'm going to set up my radio buttons. So radio button one, we'll just set them up to look like this, two, three. And radio button one will actually be RB uh, real. Uh, and we'll, the text will be Brazilian real, just like that. Radio button two is going to be RB pound. And we will set the or the text up to British pound. And three, we'll set the text up to be Canadian dollar. And we'll come up here and make it RB uh, Canadian. I don't want to say dollar because that's the name of the American currency as well. All right, so now that that's all set up, I realize my form doesn't need to be quite as big. So now I can shrink it down here, so horizontally this button. Make the button say BTN submit. Ooh, whoops. There we go. I still got it, but it's op accidentally opened up my toolbox there. And the text will be submit. And then I'm going to click form one and change the accept button. Where are you at? Accept button to be BTN submit. Fantastic. All right. Um, oh, and I will need this form actually to be bigger. I forgot there's a text box over here. All right. Uh, just like that. Uh, I actually may get rid of this label here, but we'll see. We'll see when I, as I'm working on it, and I'll recenter this button, just like that. Um, you know what? 
I'll recenter those two. They look better that way. Uh, I'm I'm real picky about my you you, you my GUI my graphical user interface. Uh, so that looks that looks decent. Okay. Uh, and so what we want to do is now we're going to come behind the scenes here. Uh, so I'm going to come back form one and I'm going to give myself a new member variable because I want some way to convert this exchange rate. So I'm going to do private uh, double uh, exchange rate. All right. Uh, and in my form one constructor, I'm just going to say exchange rate equals zero. I'm also going to create a new method called private uh, private double uh, convert currency, and it's going to take a double um, American uh, and a double rate, just like that. Now I'm writing it modular. Um, and what I mean by that is, even though we have access to exchange rate, I'm still going to read in rate in case I ever really want to take this function and, and pull it out of this program and put it in another one. All right. Um, I'm making it simpler to do that. I'm not saying I would. It's going to be a really simple function, but that's just how I'm setting it up. I'm setting it up so it's modular, so I could move it in the future if I wanted to without worrying about scope and variables and stuff like that. So it's going to read in the rate uh, as one of its arguments. Okay, and inside I'm simply going to return uh, American times rate. Okay, real simple like that. Um, if you wanted to take the rate off and just use the exchange rate as part of the class there, that I mean that's fine too. It really doesn't make any difference. Um, okay, so we have that set up. That's all well and good. Now let's go ahead and create our event handlers for our radio buttons. And what our radio buttons are going to do is first thing they're going to do is they're going to change our exchange rate to the exchange rate of that currency. Now, I looked these up online just now. Uh, the Brazilian real is currently worth uh, or two or 2.0 six four five zero uh, Brazilian reals is worth one dollar. Uh, and then we will change LBL current type to uh, dot text to equal reals just like that. All right. Uh, and we can test this. If we click this, we see reals. So perfect. That works just fine. All right. So let me close this. And now let's do the British pound. I'm going to copy this, paste it. Exchange rate for the British pound is equal to 0.64276. So one American dollar is worth that in pounds. And we'll make that say pounds. All right, and then we will do the Canadian dollar, just like that. And the exchange rate for Canadian dollars is 1.02678. And we will say, we're just going to be uh, C dollars. I don't want it to take up a lot of space. C dollars. Okay, why not? Canadian dollars. All right, fantastic. So we can test this here. I run it. I see reals, pounds, and C dollars. Great. Now, I want to have the event handler for my button, so I'm going to double click my button. And when the user clicks the button, what we want to say is we are going to say double result. And then we were going to say uh, if, uh, oops, if double dot try parse. And then we put in uh, text box one dot text. I really should have renamed that text box one, but I didn't. Uh, and out result. So if we successfully parse, then we're going to say, oh, I'm missing a, a parenthesis. That's not what we're going to say. Uh, we're missing a parenthesis there, so we add that. We are going to say label converted currency dot text equals convert currency. And we are going to pass in result, and we are going to pass in exchange rate. Like I said before, you technically have access to that uh, globally within this code, so I didn't necessarily need to do pass in exchange rate, but I'm doing it for modularity. And then I'm going to say two string because that is going to return a double. All right, just like that. Okay, so now we can test it. So I'm going to say uh, I want ten dollars uh, in British pounds. Okay, I'm going to hit enter. 
Now I see ten dollars is six point four two seven six pounds. All right. Uh, I want to do. Um, we'll stay with stick with tens because we can dash check this Brazilian reals. So I'll click that and I will see uh, that's worth twenty reals. Twenty point six four five reals. Let's do. 45 Canadian dollars and you know when I click that this changes C dollars I know I've modified my exchange rate behind the scenes and I hit submit um, and we already see sort of a GUI error in that this didn't shift so we got some overlap here but you know whatever this is just a real quick simple app I'm not gonna bother with all that um, so we see that our conversion program is successfully working so at this point we've built a, a useful uh, piece of software. Um, if you had some way of keeping those conversion rates up to date, um, this would be a very useful piece of software to consistently check. Say you travel a lot, you want to figure out what your exchange rates are, uh, you can certainly make it happen uh, using this. So uh, there you go. So this is a real quick sample application. Uh, you can see exactly how I wrote it. Uh, there's a lot of places we can improve this. All right, we can do a lot with our event handlers to make them better and everything. We'll get there. That's in the next part of the series. We're going to talk more about event handlers, and in that part, we're going to do we're going to remove redundancies and kind of improve our event handling and stuff like that. But here, uh, the goal is just a real simple uh, program. Kind of pulls everything together. We got our text boxes, we have our labels, we have our stateless buttons, we have our our state full buttons, uh, and we have some design elements and stuff like that. So uh, very useful so far. All right. So stay tuned uh, for the next part in this series where we will gonna, where we're going to talk more about things like uh, event handlers and and other items that, that, Im that improve the quality um, of our of our programs and make them more robust.